Hi, my name is Carrie Mubarak at wooingnature.life and this is the artist view of the tarot and oracle. Um, not your typical flip through. Uh, I know there are plenty of those out there, but I am an artist. I'm a visual artist as well as a theater artist. And so what draws me to a deck as an intuitive is the artistry. So, um, so my flip through is really about featuring the artist as it as much as it is to um, feature the uh, the channel or the interpreter of the information and so today's great oracle deck um, that i will be uh, focusing on the art around is a deck by alana fairchild i have several of hers um, so i do appreciate the effort and the energy that it takes to um, call in a interpretive text like an oracle set but of course my focus is on the artist and the artistry because of my connection to the art um, as an intuitive as i um, may have mentioned already as an intuitive the art of the deck really draws me in and then of course as an artist it does as well so I just want to feature that. So um, a lot of times when you get a deck of cards the artist is, is absent from it when you first get it. You of course see the channel or the person who wrote the book um, very often as in with this um, deck you don't see the artist um, where the artist information a little bit about the artist's information is found in this deck at the very bottom in font you probably would need a mag magnifying glass to see. Um, and then in other, other decks you're going to find them as you find this one in the back of the book somewhere with maybe not even this much information but just a little bio about the artist themselves. So this flip through or this um, study of the deck is really about the art itself um, as much as it is about you know the, um, enjoying the deck as an intuitive so i'm going to read uh, to you a little bit the bio that's in the back of the um, guidebook the artist for the Kuan Yin oracle is uh, wang yi guang and um, as i mentioned this is the deck itself um, for those of you who can see a little bit, you can already see how beautiful this artwork is. And it's me showing you this in a video is probably going to pale. Well, I know it will pale in comparison to actually seeing the deck up close because the amount of detail in these paintings on this card are so exquisite and and um, and so beautiful. And when I share with you a little bit about this artist's background, you'll know why um, they were selected to do this deck. So Wang Yi Guang is the artist born in the Lin Yi of the Shandong province in China in 1962. In 1977, he was enrolled in the Department of Fine Art in the Shandong Taiyan, I believe I'm saying that right, normal university. He graduated in 1980. Uh, that's when he became a teacher in the Department of Fine Arts in the Shandong Lin Yi University. And in 1988, he obtained a postgraduate degree in oil painting from the Central Academy of Fine Art. And the Central Academy of Fine Art in China is considered to be one of the most um, prestigious schools. What I learned from my own research is that they turn down about 90% of their applicants. Um, they have about 3,800 uh, students enrolled, at least in, in, in my research. But the Beijing Central Academy of Fine Arts um, has a history that dates back to um, 1918. There uh, was apparently a merger of some sort, and then this kind of became the art school. Uh, they have six different schools um, of art, the School of Fine Art, the School of Chinese Painting, School of Design, School of Architecture, School of Humanities, and then the School of Urban Design which is also an interesting kind of side note because um, what I learned also is that Wang Yi Guang presently is employed as the Deputy Senior Creative Designer for the China Railway Construction Corporation. 
What's even more significant about this is, in, and it's stated in this book as well, that he has closely followed the construction process of the Qinghai Tibet Railway. And the Qinghai Tibet Railway is the highest and most used railway system in, well, it's the highest rail, railway system in the world. Uh, some portions of it um, are at a about a 4,000 foot elevation. Um, and so it is the highest railway system in the world and it is the most populated or the most used railway system in the whole continent of Asia. And so what I learned is that he is actually the um, deputy senior creative designer for the Railway Construction Corporation in China. Very, very, um, very, very interesting dossier, very interesting um, um, background for this artist, Wang Yi Guang. And um, so that tells us a lot, uh, tells us a lot about his, his background and about where he comes from and um, what he's doing now which I think is, is really, really fascinating. So I'm just going to kind of jump in. Um, I think I've said everything I needed to say. I'm just going to kind of jump in and begin to show you these images. And again, doing this on a video, honestly, it's very difficult to see. This is a card that I picked up the other day um, in one of my own readings. It's the Grandmother Ensures a Safe Crossing card. Um, in this image, you can see the veins in the grandmother's hands showing her age and showing her wisdom. You can uh, see this sort of proud smile on her face as she brings her daughter over into, I don't know, crossing a road or over a crossroads. It's very, very, um, very, a very poignant image. And the one thing I like about Yi Guang's uh, paintings is how he does capture mood, how he captures the mood of these women in this deck. Um, this is a Quan Yin deck, so there are very few male figures that you'll find in this image because, of course, uh, the energy and the mythology and the history of the goddess Kuan Yin is, of course, associated with the feminine or with the femme. So if you are um, working with women or working with people who identify um, as femme and who want or um, those who don't, who need to get in touch with their feminine side, this is a really great deck to to go to. Um, and what I appreciate about um, the artist's sensitivity is that he really seems to capture the mood of women in these decks. You know, when you look at them, you can see, um, sometimes you can see fear, sometimes you can see worry, pride, you can also see in them um, a sense of wonder. Sometimes you see uh, images of women that are just kind of like there, staring out in the space. We've all been there. So to me, I feel like as an artist, he's very sensitive to um, women uh, and what it is that they sense and see and go through every day. In this card, I like this because I see the mischief in this one's face and then the innocence of uh, a young woman. The other thing that's ever present in his paintings, um, at least for this deck, is the yak, um, which I was very curious about. I don't know a lot about Tibetan culture. I do know some. Um, but when I saw the yak constantly uh, being displayed in almost every image throughout, uh, it all it automatically reminded me of the buffalo in the Native American tradition or the water buffalo. As I did my research, I found out that the yak is related to the water buffalo and to the buffalo. And in Native American culture, the buffalo represents sustenance. It represents life. Um, everything that um, was used or um, the animal, every part of the animal was used. And so there's this tie between uh, life and sustenance and, um, and um, I don't know, 
fecundity, I think that might be the word, um, is associated with the buffalo. And so I automatically kind of felt that that may be the same. Even here, you see it represented in her clothing. I absolutely love this card because she's just young and fierce and powerful. Um, and instead of the yak being around her, she's wearing it, which means that she's um, adopted some of the traits or the characteristics of the animal. The other thing that I like about this deck is when they bring in the elders, these old, these uh, juxtapositions between the old and the young, the wise and the innocent, or um, they're, they're really moving. Um, but the yak, as I, as I said, I went ahead and, and did a little research about the yak. What it said is that in Tibet, the yak is not considered to be a sacred animal like you see the cow in India um, and some of the other sacred animals associated with indigenous people, but it is considered to be the most important animal. Important because um, of its uh, wool. Its wool is used in, um, in Tibet to make clothing, and you do see that in this deck as well, in the clothing. Very intricate design. Um, very detailed and and if you buy this deck you'll see what i'm talking about but you can actually see just the little tendrils of fiber there which also um, speaks to wang yi guang's um, expertise and his background in the arts very much detail so the yak is uh, considered to be the most um popular animal. Um, I did some research on TibetTravel.org. Um, they also said that they're most ab the most abundant and the most useful. They have wild yaks and then they have domesticated yaks. Um, again, they are related to the bison and the water buffalo. Uh, what I found is interesting is that they climb up to 13,000 feet. So they are able to, to um, to live and breathe and operate at 13,000 feet, which also says um, spiritually, if we think about things that can operate at a very high level of elevation, that they're also considered to be wise or um, knowledgeable or spiritually adept. The other thing that I learned is that they virtually don't make any sound. They're silent, quiet creatures. Um, which also relates to their connection to the mountains and those people who live in the mountains and the mountains itself, if you ever go to the mountains, it'll make you be quiet. It sure will. It'll help you get close to yourself. If you go to a mountain, you're likely to have an enlightened experience in one way or the other. And so um, that elevation kind of speaks to the animal itself from a spiritual standpoint. So the yak is important, and um, Yi Guang makes sure that that is present 